It's an ancient disease is what I thought. I just didn't believe that. I was like, I can't be at risk for this. I'm strong, I'm healthy. I'm from Paris, Tennessee. It's rural Northwest Tennessee, um, home of the world's biggest fish fry. Just go ahead and start the sandwiches. Whoops. Etsy grilled cheese, y'all, right here. My church from Nashville was taking a mission trip to South Africa. I knew I had to go. I mean, bless her real quick. Yeah. The nourish of our bodies and ourselves to your service. In your name, I pray. I got right. back in late December of 2007. January, I felt normal. And then by March, symptoms started to pop up. My doctor, he took a chest x-ray and he said, you've got pneumonia. I went back for a follow-up. They did a needle aspiration right through here. They stuck the longest needle I've ever seen in my life through me and grabbed a piece in my lung and studied it. At the end of March is when they called me and gave me my true diagnosis. And they told me that I had tuberculosis. At that point, I thought, okay, I'm gonna be treated for two weeks on isolation and then they can rehire me at my job and I'll go back to work and just continue to take the medication like nothing's wrong. What actually happened was those two weeks became four weeks and those four weeks became eight weeks and then those eight weeks became 12 weeks of isolation. Isolation separates you from everything that you love. I mean, I couldn't see my friends. I couldn't go to my job. What was inside of me was a threat to other people. I could not see her. She couldn't see me. It was a family destroyer. That was a, a, a difficult time. I um, always just wished I was close enough to hold her. It's close to me, you know. Jail, that's what she called it. She would get out, we'd go directly to the doctor's office, she had to wear the mask. The mask, that kind of puts a stigma on you. You see a mask on someone, then you're gonna try to keep your distance. She felt dirty. You know, she felt like that people just were making a point to move away from her. Every morning, a health care worker would come out to my house, give me all the oral drugs that I would take by mouth, and then I would come in to Vanderbilt, have an infusion for a couple of hours, drive 30 minutes back home. I would take my second dose of oral medicine. That became my life for the next two years. Well, TB's been a foe of man, dating back to the Egyptian pharaohs and mummies. It's been described in ancient Indian texts three, 4,000 years ago. It was known as uh, Shaya Roga, or, uh, or the wasting disease. In the UK, it used to be called the White Plague. In the 19th and 20th century, it was the leading cause of death. 70 to 90 percent of the world's population in North America and Europe were infected. It was killing about 80 percent of the people that became sick with TB. TB bacillus was discovered by Robert Koch, you know, more than a century ago. It was the treatments that was the game changer. If you look at the curb in the United States, it was coming down, you know, from the early part of the 20th century down to the modern times. It was almost a straight line disappearing. The notion was that we had the tools to control this disease. Incidence of TB was declining across the world. We globally got lulled into a sense of complacency that we had this problem under control. So there was not a lot of incentive on the part of biotech, physicians, scientists who are interested in this. If you looked at the number of people, it is, it is quite shocking. We had one or two grants for a total of about three or $400,000 of people working on tuberculosis. There was no interest in doing it. Once the investment dried up, you know, young scientists 
were not choosing to get involved in TB because there were no resources to do that research. TB in terms of the global agenda was utterly neglected for a period of at least four decades. We had a rude awakening in the 1980s when we had HIV. We had that blip up, which is a cold pail of water in our face saying, you know, if you, if you don't pay attention to TB, it has all the capability, even in a highly developed society like the United States, of bouncing back. And now our vulnerabilities have been exposed. We're sitting in the world today with 1.4 million deaths, 9 million new cases each year of TB. That's a person dying every 30 seconds of this disease. Now all of a sudden looms up this realization that tuberculosis is a very, very serious problem. And particularly when you're dealing with multiple drug resistant and extensively drug resistant tuberculosis, it's getting worse. MDR-TB is not like normal tuberculosis. Altogether, I was resistant to seven drugs. Very hardcore drugs. The side effects of all those drugs were awful. I used to get so tired standing for like more than five minutes. Cycloserine, one of the drugs that I was on, the doctors joke and call it psychoserine because they say that patients just go crazy on it. It began to affect my short-term memory. I would constantly repeat myself. I would forget to show up places. I would forget to pay my rent and the bills. My fingers were numb. I would drop my cups of coffee in the morning. You keep hearing something new with some of the drugs. You just didn't know what to expect. So we, we didn't know here she was taking these drugs, whether it was, they were even working or not. I can remember one day at my apartment being on my knees and thinking, I can't do this anymore. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of doing this and I don't know that I'll make it through this. Uh, we did not discuss it with the three of us, but, but we all knew inside that there was a real possibility that, that she might not live. The reason why TB needs such special attention is that it doesn't get any. I mean, if I told you there was an airborne deadly disease that you could catch just by breathing in that was killing over a thousand people every day, would that make you a little bit nervous? When you say, how many people have TB? So how many people have the bacteria in their body? A third of the world's population, over two billion. One out of 10 people who are infected will actually develop the disease at some point in their life. And that individual can infect up to 10 to 15 more people. These are the high disease burden countries, South Africa, India, China, Russia, many countries in Eastern Europe and throughout Africa. If you're poor and live in poor areas, you're more at risk. That's where the majority of the disease exists. But this is the modern world, the age of globalization. People are, are moving. They're taking buses. They're taking trains. They're mingling with many other people. This is not a poor man's disease alone. This is also a middle class and, and a rich person's disease. You know, tuberculosis is infectious. Anyone can get it. I think we're living in the developed world with the threat that dangerous drug-resistant strains of this disease are just a plane ride away in our global world and economy. These bacteria don't carry passports here. This is a global phenomenon. And in some point in all this, so I know how much money it was. I was such a burden to our health department by having MDR, and I, I drained their budget. We're, we've just started figuring all of this out now, and it is, it's really close to a million dollars. <laughs> it's completely unrealistic to think that, you know, 10 people can be treated this way. We live in one of the richest countries in the world, and I know that if my case was a burden here, that this is not realistic to think that we can do this in a country where this disease is rampant and raging. This is an expensive disease. You have not only the treatment costs in the billions, you have lost productivity and wages in the billions. It's incredibly expensive to treat tuberculosis here in the UK. 
You're looking at 5,000 pounds for a regular case of tuberculosis, extensively drug-resistant TB, you're looking at over 100,000 pounds. And that's per case. So if you go undiagnosed for six months and you've got drug-resistant TB, there's half a million pounds minimum of expenditure to try and just treat the cases, let alone do all the associated testing to try and find where else it might have spent in the community and make sure that you've got it all. It's responsible for about 0.5% of the global economy's output. What does that really mean? 2010 terms, it's about $380 billion a year lost due to TB alone. The kind of fear that we used to have of tuberculosis in the developed world is gone. The urgency, the the attention we used to pay to it, that's not here anymore. The statistic that blows my mind is that if we were able to go to 100% detection for TB, so imagine we're in a perfect world. We're finding every person who has TB, we're treating every person that has TB, and they're all getting better. In the year 2050, there will still be a million new cases of tuberculosis every year because so many people still have the TB bacteria in their bodies. That's down from 9 million a year uh, currently, so that's actually, that would be a big success. But what that tells me is that we're never truly going to eradicate this disease without a vaccine. Well, there's no effective vaccine against pulmonary TB, the most infectious form of TB. In the end, we really have to think about new tools, new drugs, new diagnostics, and new vaccines to treat one of the deadliest infectious diseases of humankind. I think it's the world's responsibility to deal with diseases that threaten us. This is about all of us. It's about me, it's about you, it's about our families. And I don't think any of us are really truly protected from a disease like TB. Walking out of my very last infusion, I can remember feeling so triumphant and just thinking, thank God, I have made it. My husband, Brad, he's a contractor. I'll go and help him clean up the site. I have so much more energy and I feel like me. You know, tuberculosis has really changed me. Now I can give a voice to the disease. I believe that a vaccine is completely necessary. It could have meant five years of my life back. Tuberculosis is not a disease that discriminates. If you breathe in, you can catch it.